Hello, let's jump right in. Last time we looked into single points, we looked into multiple points, we looked into uh, multiple points, uh, sorry, point clouds on how to extract points from objects. Um, we looked in how to do different operations, how to find other points on curves, how to divide curves um, and, and create these division points and, and so on. And now today we go a step further. We go into lines and lines are important because it's the stepping stone into plan drawing and you will need it. You will need to understand them in order if you want to draw in 3D. It's, it's really important. So, um, yeah, I'm here in, in Rhino 7 and um, I set my units to meter. If, you, if you're not in meter, if you want to also draw in meter, you can set the units by right clicking here and go to the document properties panel or dialog. And in units, you can change the model units. We'll talk about all the other options here late in another video. Okay. So there are two ways, two, two main types of, of um, lines. One is a polyline. This is the, if I right, if I left click, that's a polyline. It's basically a chain of vectors. Um, maybe I just jump into top view only. So it's basically a chain of vectors. So every time you you click here, it says start start of polyline. Don't worry about this at the moment. So we can start by as you learned before by by either clicking in, into that space or by setting a, a coordinate. For example, zero. The, uh, zero, zero, zero means x is zero, y is zero, and z is zero. So it's at the origin. And you can see that my point is already um, snapped to that point exactly here in the center. And if I now right click or enter, then it creates already a line between that start point and my mouse, wherever my mouse or my cursor is at the moment. And then I can set another coordinates. So that concept should be clear by now. Um, I just click and then it asks you for the next one and the next one and the next one. And although there is no snapping on, it actually snaps to that point here, which is interesting. But I could close it or I can just leave it open. And if I want to stop here, so if I close it, it will just end the, it will just end this command and it will just close it. So then if you look now into that properties panel here, you see the ob object properties, you can see type is closed curve. Now polylines, lines, curves, arc, they're all curves. They're all curve types. They, they don't have a, an arc yet or an arc. In, in Rhino, they're all curves. And this is a closed curve. And if it's if I don't close it, if I just stay it open and you do it by now clicking enter, then you stopped the command and it's an open curve. So they had two, basically two types an open curve and closed curve. And this can be also selected separately. You can select open curves. Then it selected only that one. Or you can say select closed curves. Then it only selected these. So sometimes this is very important to know. And as I said before, these are chains of vectors. Um, a vector is basically a line. If I draw a line here, I can also, again, write the, the comments in here, a line. 
and this draws me a line a single line and it has a start point and an end point that's important because it means it has a direction so a line is a vector with two coordinates a start coordinate and an end coordinate and important is that it has a direction you can see the direction if you click here on the analyze button um, you, later on much much later on you will you will you, you will need this uh, information it, for some for some of the operations later on but don't worry about it just for the moment and um, just see this is a line between two coordinates two points basically so we knew how we made points before and yeah so if if I type in again here if I type in line it asks me a lot of things so actually it gives you a lot of options here basically these are different modes the way and how you draw the line and uh, you can activate or or deactivate them by typing these underlined these underlined letters if I if I don't if I don't um, activate this it's just a line that's it so that's that's all it does if I okay let's go back line if I if I uh, use one of these um, underlined letters for example both sides I can type B for both sides and then it actually creates a mirrored line from the from the start point and sometimes this is super useful um, also with the line drawing was what's becoming more and more uh, important is to understand the snapping functions snapping here on the on the bottom you can snap to the end point to to the midpoint center that would be later I will explain in another uh, video um, intersection could be often important perpendicular tangents maybe I can explain another time and so on so these are the most I would use for pure line drawing um, so for example I draw another line and this I can do with right click I want to start from the, the, the midpoint and it didn't set the both sides so I could actually go here and draw set both and it draws me a line and the mirror line to that but let's um, so if if I again go in here uh, normal angled vertical four points so the, there are a lot of different ways in how I can draw my lines and but before we try all these I actually want to show you that this uh, this tool has also a, a subset and I'm gonna extend this here because some of these functions are actually in here and we will go we'll see what we can choose from here and if they are already here then we might we might not check it again so for example you have the line segment which I just showed you let's kill this we have let's go through all these the line segment so I just showed you if I enter it, it jumps back into the command if I now use one of these then I actually jumps into the into the subset here you can see line from midpoint so this is basically the same as the both sides a normal line from a surface or a line or a curve a vertical line from C plane that's very useful a line from four points and we can try all these so let's let's go for one by one line from midpoint we saw it already that's the same as if I if I go here and choose both sides normal normal is interesting so I, I will just quickly draw something where this can be really s see this effectively draw a ball in order to make it more nicer to look at let's go into shaded 
Now, if I use this here, line normal to surface, I select this because it's a surface. It's a ball, but it's also a surface. So if you, again, it's a closed surface here, you can see the type and it asks me select curve surface, poly surface or sub D for normal line. And I selected this and now it's basically um, snaps my start point to that surface, onto that surface. And it basically draws the, the line normal to that surface. It also shows you the direction of the surface. The same is with the same with uh, lines, which have a direction, as you can remember. Surface also have a, a back and front. Yeah, so that would be this. It works in both directions, by the way. And if you if you have a very specific point on your surface, then you can snap to that point. So, for example, if I have my snapping on here, endpoint near or mid, and so on, I can actually snap to that even if I snap to the midpoint, it still it stays in the same line as this as this line. It snaps to the endpoint, but it still draws the normal to that surface. It's quite amazing. Also these quadrants of the ball are actually marked here as uh, endpoints and intersections. The intersection is this one. So you can always see what is snapping to actually. Snapping on the surface. Of course you could go further and draw many Okay, very useful tool is this vertical line. Okay, before we jump into that, um, I want to show you something where you can restrict the angle of, of, of your line drawing. So if you click here, Ortho, so there are, there are different ways to draw and plan. And it's completely free mode. So if there's nothing yet in your drawing, it cannot snap to anything. Uh, so you use either coordinates to be precise or it can use snap to grid, then it snaps to these grid intersections here. And, and you can also restrict it by autographic, so it means it's always goes at an angle, and you can actually set this to specific angles so either it's just um, restricted to horizontal or vertical in the main uh, axis or if you right click here and s go to settings you could also set it to another increment for example every 45 degrees so if I now draw this, oh, if I now draw the polyline, it's it allows me to also draw it forty five degrees, but it doesn't allow me anything else. However, it still be able to snap the points. Anyway, so vertical line. For example, I have a plan drawing. Very simple rectangle drawn with my with this on. You can either go to the snap to the point. Alternatively, you can also close it to make sure. So by typing C as in close, it actually closed uh, my rectangle. Then, um, but it works with any shape. I turn it auto off here, for example, just to show you. I'm here and I want to close it. I type C, close. It's closed. But for example, I want to now create, um, I want to create a inclined plane, which looks like a rectangle from above, but it's actually sloped 
in 3D space, I could go into here and if I use this uh, draw vertical line tool, it allows me to actually draw in the set axis. So I could do this, uh, draw something here, 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 and I could set now a surface between these points. This is just an excursion into surfaces, but the first one you can do, the first one here is um, surface from three or four po corner points. So you could go here, 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 and here. And it draws me a surface between these per points. So I use this uh, vertical line tool fairly often, especially for terrain modeling. This is super useful. Next in here is the line from four points. Line from four points, that is useful if you have, for example, you have, you have a line and you want to draw another line somewhere over here. Let's say, which is in the same direction and position as this line, but over here to close these off. For example, I, I very seldom use this, but um, could be useful in some cases. So if I click this, I can set my baseline and it it's, it restricts my, my, um, my cursor to that direction. And then I could, for example, um, set another line, which is in the same direction as this one. Um, yeah, I, I not very often use this. What, what I use though is, is um, for example, I want to draw a line in that direction, but in the same line as, as I would connect here to that one. So you could do this one, you could do the middle one, the, the middle, um, your, the, the midpoint line, that's possible, but then it's restricted to that length. What you can also do is to, oh, what I use most of the time is to snap here. You don't click snap here, you snap, and then you press tab and tap also restricts your line in that direction. That's, well, that, that I really use in, in almost like a on a daily basis. Most, most of the time I use this function. Okay, next one. This is quite cool, the, the bisector. That is really cool. So if I, it basically um, divides an angle in, into two and draws the line in the center. If you use it without any context, it's a bit confusing, but um, I'll show you how that could, could be used. For example, you have you have two lines somewhere in your drawing and uh, you want to draw a line exactly in the center here. You draw a center line from here. Then what kind of options do you have? It's actually quite difficult. You know, you in, in AutoCAD, you might do this. You're gonna draw a circle and then you connect these points and then you connect this point and then you do tab and then you have your middle line. But with this one, you actually do, it's going, it, it works automatically. And it's by just doing this. And then I still can decide if I, which direction it goes. That's pretty cool. Then the angle that also works similar 
So I want to draw a line in a certain angle to my line. Let's nah, let's keep it like that. So I have a, I want to draw a certain angle here. Oh. Um, end point end of baseline and then it asks me for the pivot angle let's say 20 and then this is my angle and it's this is much more useful than you could also do this here rotate you can also rotate and copy yes copy and then center of rotation, which is the end point, angle or reference, and then 20, and then I have the same here. But then it's it's just a rotation of that baseline. And then you need to still um, change the length as you want. So this tool is doing everything for you. Lines through points. I I never really use this. I tried it, of course, but it's um, let, let let's do it. Then you see what it, what it does. It basically creates a line through a point, uh, like a selection of points. It tries to figure out the the uh, the average direction, if you will. So, for example, I have a bunch of points here. And now I draw, so I go to this line through points, um, select all my points, and then it draws this line. I haven't used this really. I mean, it's great. It's very interesting. I, I, I never really came to the idea to use it. Maybe there's someday there's some, uh, task I need to do with I need this tool pretty interesting then we have the perpendicular from curve that's also very useful sometimes so I draw, just draw a curve we go to curves next video but just for now um, perpendicular from from curve and again as you know there are a lot of these tools have two modes so you can try it yourself for example that the bisector also works from the midpoint or the angle from the midpoint there is this uh, line per per perpendicular to curve or from or to the curve which is also quite uh, interesting so let's try both perpendicular from curve is basically wherever I want to Start my curve, for example, I because I have this snapping point to mid set to midpoint, it will s snaps to midpoint. Maybe I draw my curve from here. It, it actually still is still able to uh, move it along, and but it also keeps your line in the perpendic perpendicular to that curve. And if I want to then s really draw it from the first from the curve I set before, I can then go in here. And see from first point, and then it will, it it locks it to that first point I clicked. Let's just to show it again. So here, I want to set it from here, first point, and it's set to that, restricted to that point, that that direction. Very useful. Uh, perpendicular to curve is similar. It's just start of line and then it will restrict to the perpendicular point on that curve. And then we have uh, the perpendicular between two curves. That's also interesting. So for example, I have these two curves and I want to have the perpendicular to two curves. Here's just one option. That's it. This is a line which is perpendicular to both 
and uh, something similar would be a tangent between oh let's say yeah let's do it like this a line perpendicular from one curve snap to the tangent of the other so start line let's go here and oh. yeah that's how it worked that's better so it first selects tangent and you again by the way so what's important here is that to understand that you still have additional options here you could still go to both sides and draw this curve here it's gonna be hard here's no there is no perpendicular but it still could snap to the end point for example yeah that didn't work but um, yeah that will work for example so we have tangent to perpendicular tangent from curve this is very simple it's just it draws the tangent from a curve and you can then again say from point and it restricts it to that point you are um, tangents to tangents so that's it should be pretty clear by now maybe like this I can actually draw a tangent to the tangent polyline for points I it's also something I never really use but let's do, let's have a look okay let's do this select points to build polyline through Poly build a curve through okay it's interesting that this is in the line function because it's actually a curve um, let's try it again and then you need to enter anyway it's here so it, we had a look convert curve to polylines okay so that would be this function here that creates a lot of small segments between my my curve uh, there are a lot of ways then of course to change tolerance tolerance angle so that controls on how many points you will have, have at the end I, I recommend to, if you need this tool then you can play around with it and the last one is point lines on mesh um, we can look at that when we actually go for meshes because meshes are quite a different thing what else what else yeah so i think that's that's enough for now i will i will try to keep my uh, tutorials a bit shorter so they don't get too long please play around with these things um, they are essential oh yeah sorry we wanted to go very quickly through how that might look in grasshopper so let's open Grasshopper. You should have it automatically installed in Rhino 6 or 7. Otherwise you can install it, download it from Food for Rhino. And here we are, Grasshopper. Don't worry about this. Somebody asked me why I don't have these like uh, things here. These are just quick um quick access for older uh, scripts so I could so in order to draw a line first of all you can store lines inside grasshopper and do something with it so for example I have a line here
any line. Yeah, okay, draws a line, it draws a line, it's, so you could have a line like this, and then you can do things with it. You can, for example, extract the endpoints. If you go here on curve, because we know its type is curve, then you can actually extract the endpoints. I mean, that's what we did last time, extracting endpoints, but you can also do that here. And then you could draw another line from these endpoints um, to construct a line is this point this uh, uh, tool here you can actually draw a line by giving the start and end coordinates so you could have a point Right click is always setting something or doing something within that tool. Set a point. I'll set another point. If I can actually move that around, that's really cool. And then I can just plug this in here and I have my line. And I can still change it, of course. And I can have to make that more interesting, I can have, hopla, uh, sorry, let's, let's do it like this. I can actually set multiple points. I can do this. Yeah. And now it drew a line between all these points and the start point or the end point and of course i could set more here I could set like uh, other points then it drew lines between the start points and the end points and because i drew less points i have less points in here it connected the last three to the last one in that list so it basically compares two lists. There's, it's like a list here. See, there's a list with all the coordinates. And there's another list here. And you can see I have 11 items here, I have nine items here. So I could also do 11 here and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Oh, ten. Made a mistake. Anyway, let's do it again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Twelve, yes, twelve, because a list always starts with zero. Zero, one, two, so it's actually twelve points, but it counts from zero, so that's why it's eleven. Um, and you can construct points and, and and lines in between, of course. So you could go to vector, and in vector you could construct a point that's what we did last time with for example a slider um, if you click here you go on number for round numbers with a maximum of 100 and we can use all we can use the slider three times Control copy, uh, Control C, Control V to paste it in, and then so I have my. I'm gonna remove this. So 
So I created my point, which I can move around. It's gonna be closer. And because it's set in the 3D space, I can also change the height. And now I could just select all these, copy, paste, and creates me a second point. And I can draw a line between these points. So yeah, that's it. Next time um, we will look a bit more into into lines and curves, especially I want to also cover some of these uh, other tools. What you can, there, there are a ton of things you can do with to, with lines and how to modify them, uh, how to create fillets, for example and so on. Okay, see you next time.